I'm Helen from Helen's House and Garden. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make hot crossed buns. Here's the list of ingredients. You can either pause the screen here whilst you go and gather them or take a screenshot and print it out, whatever suits you. If you're using fresh yeast for this recipe, the first thing you need to do is activate the yeast. If you're using dry yeast, just add that into the flour. It's really easy to activate the yeast, it's called proving. Just heat up very gently the milk from the recipe. I just put mine in the microwave for about 30 seconds and then checked it with a thermometer. You need it to be about 40 degrees, give or take a degree or two, otherwise too hot and it will kill the yeast. To this I then add the caster sugar and give it a stir to dissolve it. The sugar will wake up the yeast and start to activate it. Add in the yeast and again stir it around and it will slowly melt and the milk will turn more of a beigey brown colour and just make sure it's all nicely stirred in. Set this mixture aside for it to prove and it will become bubbly and activate and in the meantime we'll get on and put all the dry ingredients together. Put your flour into a mixing bowl and add the salt, the powdered ginger, ground cinnamon and nutmeg. I use whole nutmegs because I think when you grate from the actual nut itself, the nutmeg flavour just keeps so much more fresh. I'm using a microplane to grate the nutmeg in. Microplanes are really good for zesting lemons, limes, oranges, and also nutmegs, turmeric, ginger, garlic, anything that you need to be ground quite small and can be quite hard. Parmesan and cheese is another one too. I'll put an affiliate link down in the comments. It's an affiliate link, so if you do buy something, I do get a small commission, but it doesn't make your shopping any more expensive. And it helps me to grow my YouTube channel as does all your likes, shares, subscribes, comments, which I very much appreciate and a big thank you to everybody who's bought me a coffee, it really helps. When I add spices into any recipe, I always like to just manually stir them into the flour and this is because things like cinnamon and ginger are actually quite hot and you don't want to be inhaling those spices or them to be particularly landing on your skin. They're quite fine powder, so this stops them from flying up into the air and doing those things. Next, you want to add in the butter and mix that into the flour, making breadcrumbs. You can do this by hand, but I'm going to transfer everything into the food mixer to make life easier for myself. And the best attachment to use is a K-beater. I'm also going to wrap a towel around the food mixer, again to stop those spices being plumed up into the air. The butter's now mixed into the flour and we add the eggs. The yeast should have now activated and here it is looking all frothy and perfect. So add that in and then I'm going to change the attachment over from the K-beater to the dough hook. Start mixing and once the eggs have incorporated a little bit into the flour like this, add in your sultanas. And continue mixing until everything is formed in a cohesive dough. This mixture needs to rise just like a bread dough needs to rise. Grab a large bowl because the dough is going to increase in size and just Add some oil to that. I'm using a vegetable oil here because it doesn't impart any particular flavour. And just go round and make sure that the whole of the bowl is oiled. This stops the dough from sticking to the bowl. Turn the dough out from the food mixing bowl into your oiled bowl. You can see I'm using a dough scraper. They're very cheap to buy and really invaluable if you make anything with dough. Cover the bowl with cling film. I've oiled the dough facing side of the cling film to stop it from sticking when it rises. Then leave it somewhere warm to rise. It will double in size and it takes about one to two hours. Here's the dough two hours later and as you can see it's more than doubled in size. 
we're going to turn the dough out onto the work surface and form the hot cross buns so make sure you flour the surface really well and that will stop the dough sticking to it. This is where the dough scraper comes in handy once again. Work your way around the bowl. Don't worry about the fact that the dough is starting to sink. This is a process called knocking back, where you knock out the surplus to requirement air in the dough and then form the hot cross buns and then they'll rise again. Make sure you scrape around the bowl, getting all the dough out so nothing is wasted. Give the dough a really good knead. In baking terms, this is called knocking the dough back, taking out all the excess air that's in the dough. Kneading is just pressing down into the dough, rolling it backwards and forwards and folding the edges into it again and, and repeating that process as you can see like I'm doing here. After a couple of minutes, the dough will become more elastic. You will actually feel that the dough has changed in consistency. This is the time to stop kneading and divide up the dough. This recipe makes 12 hot crust buns, so you can either divide up the dough by eye or you can weigh the whole amount of dough and then divide that total weight by 12. It's going to be in the region of 95 to 100 grams. Everybody's flour is going to be different, everybody's yeast is going to be different, therefore I can't give you an exact weight. Once you've divided your dough, using a cupped hand, roll the dough on the counter and slightly press down as you roll it around. This will help to form the dough into a round bun shape. There is a little bit of a knack and a feel to doing this and you will get better as you go along. Don't worry if they're not perfect, it doesn't matter. We're gonna eat them at the end of the day. Work your way through the dough and when you've rolled each bun, put it onto a baking tray lined with greaseproof paper. If you're feeling brave, you can even give two-handed bun rolling a go. That's how the professional bakers do it. It's quite hard, but it's fun to try. Brush some vegetable oil onto some cling film and then cover the baking trays with the cling film, placing the oil side down on top of the buns. We're going to leave them to raise again for 60 minutes, so place them back in the warm spot. Preheat your oven, 200 degrees Celsius or 180 for fan. Whilst the buns are rising, make the paste for the decorations. Obviously, traditionally, it's a cross, but you could put dots or whatever design you want to on there. Using a small bowl, Weigh out the flour first and then add the water to the flour and use a spatula to really mix up the ingredients into a smooth paste. Take the time to make sure the paste is lovely and smooth, otherwise when you go to eat the buns you will end up biting into a hard lump and that's just horrible. To put the cross on the buns, all you have to do is use a piping bag nozzle. If you haven't got one, you can use a sandwich bag and just cut the corner off the bottom of the bag. Fill your bag with the flour and water paste and then pipe your design or cross onto your hot cross buns. And then place them in the oven which has been preheated for about 20 minutes or until they're nice and golden brown. You'll smell them when they're ready too. When the buns have finished baking, pop them on a baking rack, keep them on the tray and whilst they're still hot, go over them with some apricot jam and a pastry brush. I find a silicone brush is a lot easier than the traditional bristle brushes to do this and they're easier to clean. Work your way across all the buns and make sure they've got a nice glistening coating of apricot jam on and then let them cool down. I know this is the hard bit and then they're ready to cut and eat with butter and even more apricot jam. They should be delicious. If you like my videos, please hit me up with a like, share, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. You can always buy me a coffee and let me know how you've got on with this recipe in comments below. So for now, happy Easter, but you can make these at any time of the year. Take care and I'll be seeing you.